As generations pass and we all grow older, many fashion trends will change and many will remain. But what is it about these trends that are so important to us youth? Is it trying to fit in with these trends or is it trying to be accepted by our modern day society standards? My name is Shannon and today we are going to be exploring this a bit deeper in detail. My aim for this EPQ project is to explore how teenagers are perceived based on their clothing and the effects it can have on them as individuals. I feel it's particularly important to investigate things like this as not only are teenagers our future generation, but they are also going to be the ones taking care of us in a few years time, so it's crucial to consider their point of view on the current world as it stands and the people within it. So, fashion. Why is it important to us as a society? It's all about uniqueness and individualism, not being imprisoned to one specific trend or style. It brings people together to enjoy their own individuality, and recently it has been used as a mass social phenomenon which depicts behaviour, actions and or events that have taken place because of social influence. Fashion itself has been culturally and economically significant in not only the media but also everyday life. Its importance has increased with the new mass markets in both production and utilisation. However, where there's pros, there's also cons. Let's discuss gender stereotypes in fashion as a category. By now, you'll be at a point in your life where you should know the basic stereotypes. Girls wear pink, boys wear blue, girls wear dresses and boys wear suits. Looking back at each decade, there are fashion trends throughout all of them, but for the most part, those trends have been different for each gender. Take the 50s, for example. Did you find what you wanted? Yes, thanks. You know, you don't look like a man who'd be interested in first editions. Well, I collect blinds and bottles, too. Men dressed in a suit and tie during the week and wore slacks and a nice t-shirt on the weekend. Women wore dresses and pearls pretty much every day and always looked pretty well put together. Then if you look at today, it's obvious the differences aren't so clear anymore. But as you know, this isn't the case. Fashion, particularly nowadays, with the current gender outburst, we are on our way to demolish these stereotypes and to creating newer ones that are more gender friendly and accepting. There is an enormous shift in promoting gender neutrality and pushing out outdated stereotypes. The concept of androgynous, intergender or unisex fashion are not new concepts and are something that should be made more well known. They are of the idea that fashion should be more gender neutral and lenient. Before I enclose any details on the ways in which we can make a widespread change to this cause, first, we must learn and discuss the main dilemma, trends within the fashion category. Over the past centuries, fashion trends have always surfaced and changed the way we view one another. For instance, in the 19th century, more commonly known as the Victorian era, the emphasis of small waists created by corsets and long V-shaped bodices with a mix of a full skirt was the trend of upper class women for a long time, and anyone that didn't dress in this manner were considered beggarly and dirty. Here is a sequence of a video that compares 1790s fashion to 1798s fashion. You can find more out about this video on YouTube by following the instructions on the screen. The 1790s were a transition period, a new slender silhouette came to fashion, but it took a while till the ladies got rid of their bum rolls, wigs and white petticoats. This would help men decipher whether they'd make good wives and mothers, or whether they'd be a financial disaster, and unfortunately, this is still the case for most. However, in 2022, we have been expanding on our fashion trends, not allowing only the modeling industry to decide for us. We have a range of different ways to create newer and more inclusive trends through social media. This is largely influenced by the apocalyptic settings in 2020 and 2021, which has allowed us to bring light to newer, brighter, more gender neutral trends using aesthetic clothing that aims to lift you from the depths of the pandemic and gives us a new sense of freedom. Hello, my name is Tajata. I'm 16 years old and I currently study A-level dance and B-tech media. Hi, 
Hi, my name's Olivia, I'm 16 years old and I study double B-Tech media and A-level photography at Hi, my name is Falstar, I'm 16 and I study double B-Tech media and A-level photography. Hi, my name is Katie Moore, I'm 16 and I study A-level health and social care. Um, I have by peers that I know, they make fun of me because uh, of the way that I dressed because I didn't dress like them and what was in style so they used to make fun of me or they used to point that out and yeah I've been car called, I've been also judged really sometimes by my family sometimes by my friends to be honest because oh yeah this matches, this doesn't uh, but that's my style and all that but for the car calling bit it's really interesting because I was wearing joggers and a hoodie and I was coming to school and I was like what's going on I've been car called multiple times even for wearing shorts even I was just wearing black I looked like a boy <laughs> from the back because I was wearing my hoodie still I've been car called um, so it's really interesting um, I don't think I've personally been judged for my clothing style but I've heard comments being made towards other people because they don't fit in with what the person thinks is a good clothing style. Um, Kakoli? Uh, they have multiple times. Um, even if it's seriously just a jumper and some joggers, uh, they have. And yeah. I know a lot of people, they judge, oh yeah, look, she's wearing the same stuff. Okay, and. and yeah, honestly, I just like these trousers. Okay, like, I don't understand. I keep wearing seriously the same clothes. What's your problem with that? Because it actually, it <laughs> me off. Like, I, at the start of the year, I was like, I have to wear every, uh, like, every day different clothes. Now, going back at it, why? Why do I have to do that so I don't get judged? Who are you to judge me? Who are you? You're not God. You're not my mom. You're not my dad. And they wouldn't even judge me. You don't know what someone's what someone is going through, and even if they're not going through nothing, they want to wear that every single day. Let them be. Let them be. I feel like many people tend to look at you and be like, "Oh, they're not like what us because they're not dressed the same." I don't think that's like something that should happen. Everything and everyone should have their own style and their own judgment, and they shouldn't get judged based on it. Yeah, they have. <laughs> um, I was like in year seven, and I was wearing this like colourful like. <laughs> and and they, she was like, oh my god, like what? Do you have like patchwork on you? Like what the f is that? Like did you DIY that? It's so ugly. And I'm like, no, I got it from Urban Outfitters, and she had a problem with it. Okay, so like, I was like standing there, and this next to me she looks down and she's like oh you're wearing shoes and I'm like yeah I'm wearing shoes and she's like they're really ugly and she's like where are they from and I'm like they're buffalo shoes and she's like that's a brand um and she she just says they're ugly and I'm like okay she's like what why like why do you care and, and um yeah, it was the same. Um, little comments like, "Oh, you should wear brighter clothes and stuff like that. You should get some new clothes, like stuff like that." But some people aren't able to afford things like that, so they have to stick with what they got. Um, it's definitely really important because when it comes to fashion, you also have a lot of body shaming coming with it, and also, um fashion a lot of people express themselves through fashion and they get judged a lot like badly um although it can be 2022 people still judge a person um going to zara you can find a really nice dress but it's not going to be able to fit you although it can be a bigger size because they look at models that are the skinnier side that are the more petite side to be honest and it can really influence someone's like um psychology plus a lot of stuff and it also in our society in our generation now people really look at the clothes and people judge a lot of people by their clothes which is disgusting 
Sí. It's really important because uh, a lot of people express themselves through fashion and making fashion as well, making clothes. Um, but it's also when with fashion and clothes comes a lot of body shaming, a lot of yeah, body shaming and stuff because um, our generation kind of made it like that, which is really disgusting. And also, um, for example, a lot of people may not be financially able to purchase new clothes and high end stuff and could probably wear like the same joggers every day or same shirt. People are gonna judge them for that, but people don't really um <laughs> but people don't really understand like what does that have to do with them? Like that's their life, their clothes, they wanna wear that, they should wear it. I think fashion society is generally important because it's a way for people to express themselves, to show off their like inner selves in a way. Not many people have something to like say or can't say, so they decide to express themselves through their clothing style and through their accessories. And for people to judge that, it's just not something that should happen. Um, I mean, it just depends on what kind of person you are. For me, it's not like it doesn't. I'm not really the type of person like I, I just like throw on some random shit but like I think honestly like fashion is really important because it like it makes like people progress on like it makes you come up with new ideas and um that's how we're gonna progress in the future yeah so anyway, like, the fashion industry can be quite toxic especially with people online. Prior to linking my point back to my original question, let's go over the basic points my interviewees enclosed. There were many mentions of catcalling and basic judging of clothing, with things such as, you're not like us, I can't be seen with you if you're wearing that, and vice versa. These things, although seemingly small and irrelevant, can have a huge effect on teenagers and the way they treat one another. But fashion, particularly with teenagers, isn't just a matter of personal style. It goes beyond that. It's a matter of cost and trends. It has been proven that over 15% of teens aged 13 to 18 experience specific phobias. This is according to the National Institute of Mental Health. These phobias aren't just small things like spiders or heights. These are the anxiety that comes from everyday school life. One in particular being the fear of not fitting in, better known as agoraphobia. A fear of leaving a place someone is comfortable in and travelling instead to a social place like school, for example. Clothing isn't just a way of expressing oneself, it's a way of fitting in and keeping up with the trends. But what people don't realise is that not everyone is fortunate enough to buy nice clothing or to dress to a certain trend or style. Speaking of fears, another common phenomenon amongst teenagers and fashion is the subject of body shaming. According to a study conducted, 94% of teenage girls and 64% of teenagers have encountered some form of body shaming. These numbers are significantly high, yet they continue to increase daily. Body shaming is something that can't be easily forgotten and is something that tends to have quite a negative effect on teenagers' psychology, which could lead to other issues. This is why it's crucial for both adults and teenagers, even children, to understand that topics as, topics as such are very serious and certain comments should never be made. Words stick to people and will stay with them forever, so it's important to think before we speak. A final thing I want to go over is harassment. Harassment comes in all types of forms and sizes. However, harassment due to a person's clothing, although it doesn't seem like harassment, can be considered lewd and almost threatening, if not insulting. According to inspiredelearning.com, harassment is any unwanted behaviour, physical or verbal, or even suggested, that makes a reasonable person feel uncomfortable, humiliated, or mentally distressed. And with harassment comes the popular topic of victim blaming, where questions like, well, what was she or he wearing are asked, where things like tank tops or joggers are considered sexual. Sexual harassment is a main form of harassment and affects both men and women of any age, or whether it's having your physical health at risk. If you ever feel as though you are in danger or have been previously in danger, and need to talk to someone, it is highly recommended 
that you seek help from a professional, whether this is the police, a doctor or a charity service such as the Samaritans, who give amazing service, don't specifically require any of your personal details and act as someone to talk to or get help from during a tough time. Harassment is a bigger topic within itself and if you'd like to learn more about it, I would highly recommend watching the two videos on the screen about harassment in general and sexual harassment. But how can we prevent any of this? If you or someone you know is going through anything I've mentioned, please tell an adult that you are comfortable with and make sure to remind them that it's not their fault. And if you are an adult struggling with the same behaviour, please tell someone with authority or someone that can help you. Be more inclusive. Just because someone may not be able to afford something you have, it doesn't make them any less than you. Keep your insults or sexual comments to yourself. They are not needed and they won't make you seem funny or trendy. Be aware of your comments. Even compliments can be just as harmful as insults. Linking back to my actual EPQ question, how are teenagers perceived based on their clothing and what are the effects it could have on them? It is clear that even just basic clothing such as t-shirts and jeans can make them be easily sexualized, whether it's by each other or a member of an older generation. However, one thing I find interesting that actually wasn't picked up on in my interview is the effect of black clothing and how it can make a teenager seem more incriminating. People tend to express themselves differently and use what they have to do that. As, a, as adults, we should be able to understand that. And even as teenagers, understanding that some people aren't as fortunate as others could be crucial for not only yourself, but also the people around you. Thank you so much for watching this video. It's important that you share any information that you've got from this to your peers or even carers. And if you know anybody who you think would like to watch this video, please share it so we can make a widespread change encourage teenagers to appreciate one another for their own uniqueness and individualism.